So at this point in the evening, we are going to introduce our keynote speaker, Professor Noam Chomsky. And to do that, I am going to invite up Artha Energy, a former board member of Brooklyn for Peace, a labor educator, an immigrant rights activist, and a writer. Artha? Chance of a lifetime. Good evening, brothers and sisters. I'd like to take you, thank you for attending, and thank Brooklyn for Peace, a torchbearer movement, for hosting this electrifying event. We are here tonight to listen to and learn from one of the most important scholars and activists of our time. I am delighted that Noam Chomsky is here to share with us his knowledge, thoughts, and insights on US and global politics. Even though informed people, both in the US and across the world, line up literally to get a ticket to his speeches and classes. Our two big political parties and their corporate media and their Wall Street and their war establishments keep excluding him from their discussions and narratives. Well, except for the September 15th letter on Obama and ISIS that came out in the New York Times. This behavior symbolizes what I often call journalism of exclusion or politics of exclusion. If you can't face the truth, you simply exclude the face of truth from any conversations and then call the discussion mainstream. Even George Orwell would cringe. I first met Noam Chomsky when I was a graduate student at the Journalism School at Columbia University. Columbia Journalism School, as you know, is one of the leading institutions that incubate journalists for corporate media. When I invited him to speak there, there was a lot of resistance from within the establishment. But I also had support from Professor Victor Navasky, then editor of The Nation. Noam Chomsky spoke at the department perhaps for the first time and perhaps the only time. And even though it was a sellout event just like tonight, out of our 350 journalism students, only 100 showed up. So that was my first wake up call because as a first generation immigrant from Calcutta, the open city of poet Rabindranath Tagore, I had grown a different idea that American academia was all about challenging, questioning, and critical thinking. That utopia shattered to pieces. And after 14 years of keeping in touch with Noam, going through some of his past literature and lectures, I am not convinced that the experience at Columbia was not out of line. I realized that is the mindset of a vast number of the American people. People who just handed the war and prison industries and global profiteers and polluters, union busters and immigrant slave drivers a landslide victory. Yet, in the midst of this gloom and hopelessness, I also saw at least four life-changing people's movements in the United States that I was privileged to be involved with. Number one, the 2003 anti-Iraq war march, which Brooklyn for Peace was a lead organizer of. Number two, the 2005 and 2006 immigrant rights rallies that swept America. Number three, the Occupy Wall Street movement. And number four, the historic People's Climate March two months ago, 
that rocked the US establishments and media. I was not present during the Vietnam era, and I was not present when Dr. King marched on the streets of Selma and Montgomery. But I was present in those other marches to believe that a determined and united people's movement will bring an end to this darkness and despair. In the Russell Einstein Manifesto on 9th July 1955, they said, quote, in the tragic situation which confronts humanity, we feel that scientists should assemble in conference to apprise the perils that have risen as a result of the development of weapons of mass destruction and to discuss a resolution, unquote. Almost 60 years have passed since then and the phrase weapons of mass destruction has now become a cliche. Thanks to celebrity journalists like Judith Miller and her former employer. The United States, the self-styled savior of humanity, peace and freedom, now has the largest in history stockpile of nuclear, chemical and biological weapons in addition to its massive arsenal of traditional weapons and drones. Global economic aggression on one hand and military aggression on the other have reached a new historic low. Human civilization is crying out in pain because of the powers, economic and war policies, policies that make the share of wealth owned by the top 0.1%, the same as that owned by the bottom 90%. This is America, and this is the American dream. Is there any way we can find a way through this mind-boggling mess? Can we find a language to fight back for ourselves, the 99%, getting out of the left-right, liberal, conservative, Republican, Democratic box? Do we, the 99%, have any legitimacy at all? Kuwait Tagore said, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. I want to wake up in that country tomorrow morning. I am sure you do too. Can Noam Chomsky, the torchbearer of truth and the leading voice of dissent, help us to realize that dream. On behalf of Brooklyn for Peace, now it is time to honor him with our Pat Licker to Peace Award. Thank you.